seem to have drawn the short straw again in that I am sandwiched between Ricardo and, and Constantinos, which is a difficult place to be, but I'll try my best. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, young people and reduced risk products, and this is a really important issue. It's maybe not an issue that you know, affects you day to day because everybody in the room is an adult and uh, you're using these products or you're not, but boy, boy does it ever affect the attitudes and beliefs of regulators, politicians and researchers and others. So what I want to do is uh, take you through um, the evidence on w whether young people are using electronic cigarettes in particular, whether they're using, regular, using them regularly, and what we can say uh, to our colleagues about this evidence, and also what we need to think about in the future. So the sort of background to this is the largely what I would describe as hysteria, uh, the concerns that the public health community have around protecting children, which are legitimate, from addictive products, and this whole concept of the gateway, which we're all familiar with, and also, of course, the concerns that they have about e-cigarette marketing. They describe channels that are previously used by traditional cigarettes. They talk about celebrity endorsements as being worrying, about online promotions, and of course, social media user-generated content as well to, to promote products. The growing number of, of different product types, a lot of concern about flavors, as you will know, and innovations. And then, of course, investment in e-cigarette point-of-sale displays. So my colleagues will say to me, well, you know, the e-cigarettes are where the lottery tickets used to be you know, at the point of sale. So um, we've seen a big, big change. And what we know, unfortunately, from the evidence, so I also work in alcohol, and we know that alcohol marketing does have an impact on consumption. You know, if you market a product successfully, you make it look attractive, uh, people are going to potentially want to buy it. And that includes children who often view marketing as aspirational. So they're keen to try the products that adults try. So I think we, d we have to generally accept that marketing does have a role in consumption. So you can see where some of these concerns are coming from, and to some extent they are legitimate. But the way what then happens is there is a leap to, well, the e-cigarette marketing is renormalizing tobacco use. And that's maybe where we don't have any evidence, which I'll talk about later. So we've, um, we've, done, we've looked at this issue for a while. We were commissioned by, the, the, most of the data I will show you is from the UK. I will show you information from other countries, though. But we were asked by Public Health England to do a review in 2014. And this just shows you how quickly the field is moving. We were looking for all the studies on e-cigarette use in children, and we only found nine up to the spring of 2014, and only one of them in our own country. And in those studies, with the exception of one Polish survey that Maciek Gonowicz and colleagues had uh, conducted, every use was reported by fewer than one in 10 children and was concentrated in young people who smoke. So that's what we found at the time, hopefully useful to government. And then since the publication of the report, we've been, uh, uh, Catherine Angus and my team has been tracking all the youth studies. So she does a regular PubMed search and every time she sees a study on young people um, and reduce risk products, she saves it and looks at it. We ran exactly the same search terms again in October, then in March, and then last time last month to look at all the published peer review studies reporting prevalence of use. And we identified 41 the last time that we looked. Uh, so there's a large number of studies. Now, these are only English language papers. There may well be some in other, other languages, of course. And there is a lot of grey literature. So, you know, uh, most US states have produced some kind of report that talks about e-cigarette use in young people. And um, certainly in my own country, there's, there's been small studies, big studies done, whatever. And they're very variable in their quality. So let's talk about the peer-reviewed literature that's had some scrutiny before it's come into the public domain. So data relating to ever use of e-cigarettes is available from 12 countries, as far as we can find. It's really difficult to compare these studies. They're surveys, it's not rocket science, but they're constructed in very different ways. Um, so first of all, there are differences in the samples, so the age range of children and teenagers in the studies from 10 to early 20s. And importantly, there's differences in the questions asked. And I think uh, those of us who work primarily in smoking cessation, you know, we have standard questions that we ask. I think we're going to get to the stage where we'll have standard questions that we ask in this area as well, but we are some way off it. And what we find in the early studies in particular is that ever use of any of these devices is often combined with regular or recent use in the surveys. Um, and, and messages are conveyed that, that look at those uh, phenomenon together, and of course they're not the same. So I'll try and separate uh, that out for you. 
So in the surveys between 2011 and 2015, recorded ever use varied very significantly from 5% in teenagers to 62% of, of teenagers in the sample ever having tried them. And what we see, because these are, you know, we've talked about this disruptive technology, these are re still a relatively new technology, there's a consistent pattern of rising use between years. This is a diffusion of innovation. It's a new consumer product, young people are trying it, so use is going up. But rates of regular use, which is what I'm interested in, are much lower. They're commonly less than 10% in all the studies. And regular use in never smoking children and teenagers remains low. The highest identified rate is 2%. And I'll talk later about what might change in the future. So let me just give you a couple of examples. These are typical. When you look at these surveys, they're, they are, you know, they are relatively consistent, actually, in the developed world. So this is Dave Hammond and colleagues at Waterloo who did a survey where they looked at young people and asked them, have you used an e-cigarette in the past 30 days? That's probably one of the most commonly asked questions. And you can see in the, um, in the table where I've circled uh, young people by smoking status, so those who'd never tried a cigarette and were described as not susceptible, I don't think we've got time now, but we can, I can, we can talk about this measure of susceptibility. And those who'd never tried but were viewed as susceptible to smoking, you'll see very low rates of use there, 4.3 and 1.6%. But amongst the teenagers who smoked, one, um, uh, almost 30% of them, current occasional smokers, had used an e-cigarette in the last 30 days. And amongst daily smokers, it was almost 41% had used an e-cigarette in the last 30 days. So for me, this is on, in Ontario, uh, Canadian teenagers who smoke are also using e-cigarettes. That's uh, what's happening in Canada, a country that ostensibly doesn't allow uh, the sale of nicotine containing electronic cigarettes, but of course people are able to obtain them. One of the questions these surveys don't ask is, is there nicotine in your e-cigarette? One of the reasons why it's actually really difficult to do that is because the qualitative work we've done with young people, they, have no, they really don't have much idea of whether there's nicotine or not in the e-cigarette. Older teenagers, you can have more of that discussion, but it's, it's, it's actually a difficult thing to assess, so it would need to be controlled in some way. Here's another example from New Zealand, um, just showing you by smoking status amongst the never smokers, um, these are the weighted results, whether they ever tried an e-cigarette at all. Uh, about 16% in this survey had ever tried an e-cigarette, uh, and 6% who were the non-susceptible never smokers. So here's the study, the only study that sort of put the cat amongst the pigeons a bit. Um, some of you will be very familiar with this. So Marchek and colleagues did a two cross-sectional studies. This is not, uh, a, long, this is not a longitudinal follow-up. It's not a prospective study where they follow up the same young people. Two cross-sectional studies. And they asked them about ever smoking tobacco, ever using an e-cigarette, whether they were current smokers, current e-cigarette users, or using them both. And what they found is, this was a study done in schools, they found that both e-cigarette and tobacco use rose between the two years. Now that would be a cause for concern because it would suggest that people are trying these products and, and uh, tobacco use in particular is going up. However, they did these study, this study in different schools. So it's not the same communities or schools in both years. So we can critique the design and interpretation of the data, but they exist, it's been published, and that's where we are. This is the kind of evidence uh, many colleagues are looking for, though. E-cigarette use goes up in young people, tobacco use goes up in young people, equals bad news. But this is the only example we've got. So what do we see from the reports? These are useful because there's a lot of them, and I'm gonna talk in detail about the UK results because they are so strikingly consistent across different studies. The only representative national ones we have at the moment are unpublished, although they've been spoken about. One led by Deborah and colleagues who commissioned YouGov to do several cross-sectional surveys across three years. And what we find is that awareness has risen, as has ever use. Ever use was 5% in the UK in 2013, Great Britain, 8% in 2014, and I understand around 12% in 2015. Um, now they were asked, um, this is the proportion who'd ever tried them. You can see amongst those who'd heard of e-cigarettes, 75% of young people overall had tried an e-cigarette. But they also asked them, had they used tobacco first? Which was an important question, and I think is an important question to include in any surveys. So I tried smoking a real cigarette before I first tried using an e-cigarette, and 70% of the young people in that survey reported that they had. 
Um, and, and you can see below, I tried using an e-cigarette before I first tried smoking a real cigarette, only 8% of the sample. So I think for me the most um, important results now are when we put the studies together. So we have a youth tobacco policy survey that's been conducted since 1999 by our team. Um, it's a valuable data set. We spent two years uh, trying to thwart the attempts of Philip Morris to obtain our data through uh, repeated freedom of information requests. We've just run the study again, 11 to 16 year olds, and we had e-cigarettes rather belatedly in this wave. Um, the prevalence of findings, though, as I said, is very consistent. So here's the, uh, the overall uh, review, and we're, we'll be publishing this hopefully next week uh, in a short publication. So we compared the four surveys in the UK, all done in the same year. These are all cross-sectional surveys. Our survey, 11 to 16-year-olds, done in August and September 2014. The Gov survey, 11 to 18-year-olds, done in March 2014. The HBSC Wales survey, which is part of a big international survey of youth, 11 to 16 in November 13 to February 14. And then the National Study of Young People in Scotland, which is 13 to 15 year olds. In three of those studies, ever use in young people in the UK of e-cigarettes was 12% in the same year, which sort of suspects, uh, suggests that, that we can be pretty confident about that finding. That's all young people. However, the proportion of all of those young people who'd used an e-cigarette more than monthly or more than weekly, this is all young people, was still as low as 2%. And that includes all the smoking young people. The proportion of, of regular use of an electronic cigarette in a child or young person who'd never smoked, there are no young people in the UK, in the UK survey and the Great Britain survey who reported doing that. And there were 52 of them in the Wales survey, which was a large sample. So we have a tiny number of children in the United Kingdom who've never smoked a tobacco cigarette who are regularly using e-cigarettes. So when my colleagues ask me, oh, well, children are using e-cigarettes and we should be worried about that, well, we are seeing children experimenting with e-cigarettes, but we are seeing very few never smoking children regularly using e-cigarettes. And in the, in the surveys from other countries that have caught the headlines, if you look carefully at the data, they either don't ask about regular use um, or they're not reporting it. They're using the ever tried or the past 30 day use as their main figure. So we need to be honest about this and look at it very carefully. This is happening at the same time as smoking is continuing to, to decline in the UK and in other developed countries, so that's crucial. But another more worrying finding though, again from the YouGov data, is young people were asked about their perceptions of harm. These are never smokers, former, sorry, these are, um, yeah, never smokers, former smokers, and current smokers. And you see the difference between 2013 and 2014. More of the current smokers or current users were more likely to say that they believed that e-cigarettes were harmful. So perceptions of harm from e-cigarettes in UK youth have gone up. And we know that's happened in the adult population as well. So they believe they're more harmful than smoking in some cases. Um, the other thing I suppose to emphasize is the intention to which young children who've never smoked or children who've never smoked have the intention of using an e-cigarette. And you can see that amongst all never smoking children, the vast majority of them have no intention of ever using an e-cigarette. But there are a small proportion who do indicate an interest in those, uh, in those devices. And we may find that in the, in the future they do start using them. So just one final thought on that. I, I thought that Carl's presentation of the data in Norway was really important for all of us to reflect on and think about how that applies to the future in our own countries, particularly in Europe where snoot is not permitted to be sold in most countries. We're going to see, I think, an increase in uh, young people's use of electronic cigarettes in coming years. And I think inevitably we will see an increase in the number of never smoking children who use e-cigarettes. So the question for all of us is, should we be concerned about that or not? And I think Carl tried to separate out um, whether those young people might have been susceptible to smoking in the first place anyway, and instead they've used snus from those who have just come across the product. Um, and I certainly think it's preferable that teenagers experiment and potentially regularly use an e-cigarette than a tobacco cigarette but that might not be something that everybody agrees on. So we just need to be conscious of this uh, and keep an eye on it. 
So in relation to the gateway, we have no data yet to explore this phenomenon. We need a theoretical framework that would be helpful. I know some German colleagues have done some useful work on that. We have no, we have no evidence to suggest that, that electronic cigarettes are acting as a gateway to combustible tobacco use in children in developed countries where the surveys have been done at the moment. We need to be absolutely clear about that. However, we should also recognize that a significant number of young people in a range of countries are now being exposed to nicotine for the first time by using an e-cigarette. So just to conclude, there's lots of data on this. It's going to continue to grow. It's very difficult to compare the studies, but it would be great if we could come to some con consensus in the community about how we do this so we can provide policymakers and others with accurate information. But for the moment, regular use of reduced risk products, including electronic cigarettes primarily, is concentrated in tobacco smokers, and regular use by never smoking children remains very rare. Thank you. <laughs>